This is a Lenovo T400 that I bought off eBay for 35 bucks. And today we're going to be taking this old clunky laptop and turning it into a simple web server. Now, I have no idea if this system works. I just bought it off eBay, just came in yesterday. I haven't looked at it, so we're about to find that out. Let's go ahead and cut this thing open to see what sort of condition it is in. So um, I know for a fact that it does not come with a hard drive, and that's not a problem for this, and I'll tell you why in just a second, or a battery, which also isn't a problem because I have like a million power supplies for these ThinkPads laying around. Ah, here we go. And if, if you really think about it, this laptop was more along the line of like 15 bucks because you gotta subtract the price of shipping there. Pretty good deal on this uh, T400. You'd be hard pressed to find a, a cheaper laptop on eBay. It's almost like they cleaned the thing off with uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. That's the kind of smell I'm getting here. I'm kind of speechless right now because the laptop's in really good condition. Check it out. So there's almost no scratches on the lid, which is pretty um, rare with these ThinkPads because you usually get these used ThinkPads and the lids are usually like scratched to hell. Um, no battery, as I said earlier. Let's see, let's open this thing up. Looks good on the inside too. Keyboard is in great condition. Screen doesn't look like it has any sort of scratch. Oh, it does have a couple scratches here and there. Uh, there's some scratches right here. Um, but as far as internally, I don't see any cracks that would uh, affect um, actually viewing the screen. So that's good. Keyboard's in good condition, as I said earlier. Trackpad looks good. Uh, buttons are good too. And I think we're ready to boot this thing up and run a web server on it. So what we're gonna be using for that, since this doesn't have a hard drive, is a live Linux distro. So I'll just ink this out. On this flash drive, I have an installation of Lubuntu, I believe 17.04 is what I installed on this. Um, and with that installation, we should just be able to uh, run a server using simple HTTP, uh, which is built into Python. And some people mentioned this in the last web server video that I made, uh, but I don't like using that for production. I usually just use uh, the Python simple HTTP uh, server for testing. And for this case, I'm gonna show you uh, how to use it to set up a simple website. Really shouldn't be used for uh, production, but if you just wanna play around with setting up a, a simple website, uh, Python simple uh, HTTP server is the way to go because it's really, really easy to get up and running with. Now I'm gonna take my live Linux distro, plug it into this machine and see if we can get a simple website hosted uh, on this T400. And I am going to go a little bit more advanced this time with the website design. I'm gonna pull a template. Um, off the internet and use that instead. I think last time I just put like a header in there that said it works. Um, it was just big tech, like big black text. Uh, this time we're actually gonna try to put a, uh, you know, decent looking site on this. And by the way, if you're interested uh, slash don't know how to get a live Linux distro onto a flash drive like this, I have a video all about it. The link to it will be down in the description. Also, if you wanna see a slightly more detailed video about setting up a web server, uh, that link, uh, I just made that video two weeks ago, so the link to that will be down in, this, in the description as well. After you have your uh, Lubuntu installation, and this is actually Lubuntu 18.04, uh, not 17.04 as I said earlier, you can go ahead and plug it into your computer, and to boot from the USB flash drive, you're gonna turn it on. In this boot menu, you're gonna pick the first option, which is try Lubuntu without installing. I wasn't planning to make this a step-by-step -step tutorial at first, but since setting this up is so easy, I decided to do just that. So the first thing we need to do is probably gonna be the most difficult thing, and that is to find the website template. I mean, honestly, this process is just so quick and so easy that finding the website template is the thing that's gonna take you the longest. Now, granted, if your um, router is a bit finicky, port forwarding might give you a, a slight headache, but besides that, um, you're probably gonna find all this pretty easy. So just type in website templates in Google, pick a site, and then find a website template. I mean, there's there's really nothing to it. So I'm gonna use the one that we were using earlier, which is uh, the venue. And if you guys wanna get this exact template, I'll put the link to it down in the uh, description. So we're just gonna click on that. We are going to download it. And I'm just gonna put it on the uh, desktop and then we'll point the uh, Python simple HTTP server to it. So I'm gonna extract it with the archive manager. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna extract and we're just gonna extract it to the desktop. Ta-da! So that folder contains all the files for the site. Next, we need to grab a couple pieces of network information and I'm just doing that through the ipconfig slash all command uh, on my Windows machine. 
So what we need is the default gateway, which in this case is 192.168.0.1, and the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. Uh, so we need to transfer some of that information over to our Linux machine. And in order to do that, we're gonna pop open the uh, network manager using the network icon right here, click edit connections. So as you guys can see, I'm actually using a Wi-Fi network for this. You do not have to use Ethernet. Um, you can use Wi-Fi to set all this up. Now, a lot of people are going to yell at me for that and put nasty comments in the comment section about that. And yes, you should be using Ethernet for something like this. But then again, I mean, you shouldn't really be using a simple a Python, simple HTTP server to host a legitimate website. So uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff in this video is really just for the heck of it, just for fun. This is in no way a guide to actually set up like an enterprise grade web server. All of this is just for mainly kicks. So go over to IPv4 settings. Uh, set that to auto, actually don't set it to automatic. We want to set it to manual. So automatic to manual under addresses, we're going to add one. So click add and we're going to type in, uh, our default gateway followed by a three digit number. So 192.168.0 and I'm going to go with, uh, 167, um, for that last part. But really, you can make that whatever uh, you want, as long as it doesn't conflict with anything else on your network. For our netmask, we're going to change that to 255.255.255.0. And then for the gateway, we're going to put in our gateway address, which was 192.168.0.1. And then for our DNS servers, I'm just going to set that to the gateway address, 192.168.0.1. And we are going to save that. Now, there is one more thing you need to uh, check before you can actually close out of that. I didn't mean to close it. So go to IPv6 settings and we're just gonna ignore it for now. Uh, just set that to ignore. All right, so your network settings probably haven't actually been implemented yet. What you need to do is restart the uh, network manager. So now we need to open up a command line and I don't have my glasses on, so I, oh, there it is, LXT terminal. So open up LXT terminal and we need to stop the network manager and then restart the network manager. So the first command for that is going to be sudo service network manager stop. And now we need to restart it. So it's gonna be sudo service, why am I doing this? I could just push the uh, up arrow, sudo service network manager and then change stop to start. Okay, so the network manager should be back up and running. I'm gonna give it a sec to reconnect to Wi-Fi. And now we're just gonna check the network settings real quick. And you can check the network settings by using the IP uh, A command. So that's IP space A. And we wanna make sure the IP address has been set right. And as you can see right here, the IP address has been set to 192.168.0.167. Now we need to get to our router's web interface. So we call the default gateway that we memorized earlier, which was 192.168.0.167. Once you're gonna punch that into uh, the address bar and navigate to it. And once again, depending on uh, your router, some of the things are going to be different here, but for my specific TP-Link router, to get the port forwarding, I go to advanced settings, NAT forwarding, and then there's a setting called virtual servers right under that. So I'm gonna click that. And we are going to add one. I'm going to call this uh, simple HTTP. For the external port, I'm just gonna pick something that's not used by anything. So I'm gonna go with 172. Internal IP, we're gonna point it towards our laptop. So type in the uh, IP address that we set to this laptop earlier, which was uh, 192.168.0.167, I believe. I believe it was 167. Let me go ahead and uh, pop open the uh, terminal. Yeah, it was 192.168.0.167. So that is correct. Internal port, we're just going to leave that blank. It's going to set it to the same as the uh, external port. And we are going to save this. And we're almost there. It's really a simple four-step process. So now we need to navigate where our uh, website directory is. And if you guys remember, we put that on the desktop. And I believe the folder is called uh, the venue. There we go, the venue. So in the command line, we need to navigate to the desktop. So cd desktop. Oops. And then from there, we need to go to the venue folder. So CD, the venue. And now, since we're in the directory, 
that holds the website, we can go ahead and fire up the Python simple uh, HTTP server application. So I'm just going to go up here through my commands that I've put in previously. And so the command to start the Python simple HTTP server in the venue directory is sudo python m simple HTTP server and then our port number, which I don't think is 173. I think I picked 172 this time, right? Yeah, I picked 172. So all we're going to do uh, is change that to 172. Launch it. So hit enter. Now you should be able to access your site through your IP address and the port number. So we're going to enter in the IP address. And that is going to be port uh, 172. Ta-da! And you can see uh, all the requests popping up in the console on our host machine. And there is the venue website. So that website is being hosted from this little dinky T400. Um, and yes, you can access this through an external site since we did, uh, or through an external connection since we did set up port forwarding. So let me demo that real quick. So the Wi-Fi is off and now I'm going to navigate to that IP address through the mobile network on my phone. So uh, this is through an external connection and bam, we have it right there. It finally popped up in my console. There's the get request from uh, my phone. It's working. So we have a uh, simple website, well, or not really simple. We have a pretty complex website um, running through uh, Python simple HTTP server uh, on this old Lenovo T400. So really, I mean, you could run a website on basically anything. And I am going to leave this site up for a little bit, maybe a couple days, up to a week. I might I might make some uh, fun changes to this site after I publish the video. So if you want to check out the site, uh, I'll put the link uh, down in the description. But keep in mind, after a week or so, I am going to take it down because I don't want to uh, leave this running. So that's a pretty neat 20-minute to 30-minute project that you could uh, set up using an old laptop uh, like this T400. And I say 20 to 30 30 minutes uh, because I'm including the install time of uh, Lubuntu to the USB flash drive, the uh, download time for Lubuntu, the boot time of Lubuntu. Um, so yeah, it takes like five minutes to actually set up the server part of this, but um, everything else does take some extra time. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section. Oh, if you're interested in uh, checking out the seller where I got this laptop from, the link to the seller will be down in the description. So you can go ahead and uh, check out their store and maybe get a T400 for the exact same price. Uh, if, what, if you want to support us, you can use our Amazon or eBay affiliate links, uh, both of which will be down in the description. And I think uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.